We'll move on to Dr. Roni's presentation on uh, progression. Over to you, Dr. Roni. Thank Roni, you, sir. Can you give a slide and I can hear your voice. Please go ahead. Thank you, Sachin, for the invitation. And so I'm going to try and quickly take you through the visual field progression in Humphrey. And what happens on the, for any visual field is that an existing visual field effect can get larger or it can get deeper with points losing additional sensitivity or normal areas of the field may get involved. So when you have normal areas of the field getting involved or part of the field getting larger, it's very easy to recognize. And that is where uh, if you don't have access to any other way of assessing progression, you could just use clinical judgment or the observation of sequential charts. This is far from ideal, but the best, if you are going to do this, the best way of doing this is to use the overview printout on the Humphrey visual perimeter, where you can get an entire series of visual fields printed one after the other. And the advantage of using this technique is that you have all the information that is available on the complete printout for each of these fields provided right there. So you can look at reliability, you can look at the mean deviation, VFI, whatever you want, and you can compare it further down along with the pattern. But the challenge with this type of technique is that while it avoids a variety of algorithms, the challenge is basically, it is difficult for us to deal with the amount of information in the printout. And this is, suppose you start looking at the actual threshold values on the printout, and you can see that at these three points, the threshold values have actually reduced. If you're looking at 10 fields, you're not going to be able to follow 58 points on 10 fields to see what has happened to each of these threshold values. And this is more of a problem when you realize that there is a test retest reliability, which means that every point actually fluctuates. A threshold which is here may be there next time. And as the defects are, are deeper, this fluctuation is also much more. So it's not possible to actually deal with all this information manually, which is the reason why you need to use progression software such as trend and event analysis there are two basic ways of doing it. One is a trend analysis where basically what you're doing is you're looking at the mean deviation or the visual field index or the pattern standard deviation over time. So you're looking at that value and you're seeing what happens with time and then you're applying mathematical regression to it to see whether this is statistically significant or not. And this is usually adjusted for age related changes. If you have a negative slope or a minus thing, it indicates progression. The problem with this technique is that you can mislocalize progression. In order to detect localized progression, that is just a couple of points getting worse. What is done is an event analysis, which is basically you compare the rate of progression on each of these points with this say, database of standard of stable patients. You basically take two tests as the baseline, and then you compare thresholds at each point over each additional test and see whether there is a change more than what would be expected in stable glaucoma patients. So what is available to us right now is with the visual field index on the guided progression analysis of the Humphrey. So this is what a printout would look like. You would have the two baseline tests there. You have a VFI plot there and a VFI bar here. And the third section is where you will have the event analysis. And this is what a printout would look like for somebody with the progressing disease. So the VFI basically plots the VFI value at each plot, and then it predicts this over a five-year period. And this is again done by visual, by linear regression. And it will give you a value here. Here it is minus 3 plus minus 0.9 decibels per year, 0.9% uh, uh, per year with 95% confidence intervals. But you need at least five exams over a three-year period of time in order to be accurately predict this. It also gives you the VFI bar where it tells you that if this patient continues to progress at this rate, this is where his visual field index is going to be after five years. In addition to that, on the event analysis, each of these points is classified with an open triangle, a half black triangle, or a completely black triangle, depending on whether that point has deteriorated to one visit, two consecutive visits, or three consecutive visits. And when you put this entire information together, this is what you would see. You would see a VFI bar there, and these are the VFI numbers on the side, which is showing how it's getting worse. And you can see on the event analysis too, things are getting worse. But what is typically given is a single printout like this. And here you can see that the VFI is not showing much change over time, neither are the mm, event analysis. Here, both the visual field index trend and event analysis. This is also statistically significant. Here also you have multiple points which are getting worse. 
and this is flagged as possible progression by the machine itself once you have more than three points getting past. And here you have something with a stable visual field index. That is, no trend is normal, but you are seeing points on the uh, event analysis which are abnormal. So you need to look at both together because if you have very localized change, it may not be enough to change the VFI significantly to generate a trend analysis. So you need to look at both this and this in order to take a final decision. So you have a stable VFI with localized progression. So it's important that you rule out other causes of progression too. And other causes, the commonest other cause of progression that you would find is somebody like this. Who's had a posterior subcapsular cataract and you're seeing the visual fields are steadily getting worse. And then you have cataract surgery here and it becomes absolutely normal. So if you have any significant change, such as a cataract surgery, a glaucoma surgery, or uh, let's say laser for diabetic retinopathy, you may need to take a new baseline. So in, um, in addition to all these, you should always reconfirm change, meaning any change on a single field is not enough to decide that things have become worse. Always reconfirm change. Change the baseline even if you do a trabeculectomy, a cataract surgery, or jack caps, and always correlate with other clinical observations before you decide that this progression is because of glaucoma. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much, Rani. Change is the only constant thing. We know that. <laughs> and many of us do just uh, look at the or the single visual fields and then come to a conclusion. And we have two visual fields of the single uh, printouts and say the patient is progressing or not. But it is not just enough. We need to understand the machine gives the software to understand how, which areas are progressing, which areas are not progressing. So please understand that we have to use all the other software uh, to see the progression. Thank you so much, Ronnie.